also means that the Weaver is going to have a lot harder of a time making any split push happen. Because typically you're going to build right into a Lincoln's as Weaver, but Batrider is going to have his blank well before that. So assuming that's Ten the case, they're probably looking to draw this game out a little bit longer, I think. Yeah. Question for you. Five um, seconds remaining. Weaver normally doesn't go BKB. Normally, right. I mean, could go as a very late game item, but you get Lincoln's and then you want some damage, because if you go Lincoln's BKB, you don't do anything. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I see Evil Geniuses, and I see two heroes that are very specifically about stopping BKBs, which is Batrider and Bane. Fins Grip and Lasso, two of the best abilities to stop BKBs. Invoker will not go BKB, AA is not going BKB, and Weaver isn't either. So why is Evil Geniuses picking this hero? Is it just they're good? That's ridiculously good. Like, yeah. even against heroes who wouldn't go BKB, the power of pulling somebody out of position is nuts. Sorry, James. No, no, I was just like, going, well, well uh, Bruno was looking at me like, going, yeah, look how smart I am. And I was, I kind of did the nod back, like, yeah, well done. Yeah. Good point. Great. Yeah. Two but points, Bane, Bruno. Fist bump. One point, Andy. Bane Don't leave me hanging. What? Huh? What? Radiant oh, sorry. Team Fist pick. bump. Oh, they left you hanging, man. It's rough. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, as you mentioned, their ultis in terms of <coughs> what they can do is ridiculously strong. So it's not even bad if you are going to play through a bit. And now you get the Doom. Has Doom disabled Glaives? It does. Mm, it disables like everything. Well, not everything. everything. Not Assault Curasaur. Not AC. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. They haven't changed that yet. Yeah. You know, we put it doesn't in it disable board. Vlad's too? Yes, it does. Seconds. That's yes, why it remaining. makes no sense. But it doesn't disable AC. AC. I don't know, I have to submit. It's more five expensive than an item, right? Like, yeah. it could make sense. Just go fix it right now. I forgot about Just it. Just put a patch in. It's happened before. There have yeah. been big Reserve patches during time. tournament games. It's probably going to be, like, self-fixed. Yeah. And then you never know. Isn't it just, like, changing a statement to, like, true or something? Yeah, it is. That's literally It's just, that. like, remove AC from the list of exceptions. Just can't, can't do that. I can't believe hard. you didn't fix it already, Bruno. Well, I just Ridiculous. wanted to see if any Wells figured it out. To be fair, though, Doom is it's like... It's only us talking about it. Doom did just get nerfed, though, like the ability Doom. Yes. Because now you can use Pipe and things like Flame Guard, whereas before the Doom would just go right through that. Mm -hmm. Now it actually gets absorbed. So he is a little bit weaker, but still a very good hero. Yep. I feel like Alliance needs some sort of lockdown in a team fight as their last... Alliances. It's like even if you bend. play the Invoker as Crosswear X, or you want to play in Zor. Uh, it looks Zor, like a Lumi lineup. It's, it's like, yeah, it looks like, like a Lumi lineup. lineup. Like really, a cell, no stuns. Yeah, yes. but like that's that's what I mean. Like Radiant even if you play the uh, Invoker Crosswear X, which I think you should, versus this lineup, you kind of need something else to get in there and do some damage. I mean, sure, the Doom can you know have a Centaur. Nah, uh, he's stomp, he's gonna go X right. Yeah, I was actually yeah. going to suggest Rubik as the secondary support, uh, stealing that Fiend's Grip. It's but bad. They it out it's an aggressive try lane. That's why they're doing this. Like Weaver <laughs> AA, then the Doom solos against the Bat, and then you have a try lane with, you know, very good kill potential and diving potential against a Bane, who is not really good against a Baden because you can just shield off the Nightmare, and you can dive super aggressively with a Weaver. So just <laughs> run at them. Don't need stuns. Yeah, but like. Dragonite, man, that's tanky Luna. That's not something you necessarily want to run at. And then you've got the support of the Bane. I much prefer EG's lineup Ten right here. It depends really how, how the Abaddon's going Ooh. to. Uh, but then a Kunkka. Surprise support Kunkka. Looks like yeah. it. Okay. Been calling Shout it for out years, to man. 2010, right? Yeah. Like, is that I mean, how good? many stuns does the Kunkka have? Me. Half. Two. Three. Half a stun. Half a stun. <laughs> okay. Two stuns. Well, when Bruno's playing Kunkka, like, <laughs> yeah, half a stun is about right. It's no reliable stun. The more reliable is important. The reliable player, Bruno, that we needed. <laughs> it's pretty reliable, man. Not early. Well, as Kunkka, you're going to go, like, 102 as support. Yeah, as a support, yeah. So, it'd be decent. Plus, you don't even actually need X with a Bane. No, assuming, that's the thing. Yeah. Assuming... It's not like if it's Chen versus Trilane, I seriously doubt you'll ever land a torrent like with that. You might land one just like by happenstance, but you're not going to get like a nightmare into torrent Ten cup against the yeah, ranged heroes and an abad. Do you think the Kunkka was picked mainly for his ulti Five as opposed to actually remaining. what he offers on his uh, stuns and you know, kind of other abilities as a support? Just because the alliance lineup with the Abaddon and you know, Doom being able to draw out fights pretty long, the yeah. Kunkka kind of gives you the same. You know. It negates the effects. Yeah, yeah it yeah, lets you like yeah. weather the storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, it looked like Alliance could, if they, even though they don't have stuns, can at least stand there, keep fighting. Yeah. You know, in terms of health regen and everything else, and then 
you know, with the AALT. Is it gives the them cooker? a way to actually be able to walk in and not have to worry about like Exo Invoker with Book, which I think okay. is probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Because if you get a Wolf Creep, you go Exo Invoker with Book, and you have a Weaver with Chilling Touch. Like your damage output is ridiculous. You just focus somebody yeah. with auto attacks and a Cold Snap, and they're dead. Like there's there's not really any way you can come back from that. And because of the fact that they are going aggressive, there is the potential for Sun Strikes to land. It's a lot harder because they don't have any disables. Mm -hmm. But there is still the potential for kills to happen. Uh, it's kind of a nice pickup. It'll be interesting to see how that Kunker's going to work out. But it really could uh, sway the team fights back in EG's favor, depending on how it all kicks off. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like you can't actually shield the X, correct? Like no, you, if you cannot, get shield, you cannot you... shield X. No. Okay, so I, I think this also gives a very reliable seconds, way to deal with the Weaver, because normally when you're initiating a stun here, I think it's like time lapse, Sakuchi gets out. But if he gets like X on you, it doesn't matter what you do. You, you're caught. You, yeah, you're caught into a torrent and possibly into a bolt if you time things correctly as well. That's more than enough time for PPD to actually set up a grip so, or a lasso from uh, Universe. So I, I think this is actually, especially from a support, I think you would just actually max X and, and max Torn and maybe have one point to tor uh, Tidebringer and just, you know, be the your initiator, stunner, that kind of situation. Yeah, could be. Oh, go for the oh, the oh man, oh, they got a haste as well on that uh, oh. oh, okay. <laughs> Pick it up. He wants it. I think it's going to be chasing. Uh, actually, there's no one nearby. Okay. There's no one nearby. He might actually be dead He's here. He's dead. Torrent. They didn't see him cast it. It's gonna hit Ake, but it doesn't hit Loda. There's, There's a shield. Yeah. Yeah. What's the shield? Purple. Splat. Loda gets the first blood. GG. Uh, EG versus Meet Your Makers coming up soon. Yeah, the um... Oh, yep. Oh, see? <laughs> Told you it was over. The haste rune is the only rune that would have killed him there. Which is really unfortunate. Because if it was a DD, even if the Weaver gets a DD, his Shikuchi is such a long cool what are you about? It's at level one. It's not unfortunate. Like, well, it's unfortunate for Zai, but it's fortunate for Ake. Do you think if he had um, Ice Vortex for the slow, you put the shield on Weaver, you don't have enough he damage? You have the shield anyway. Yeah. yeah, you don't have the damage. That's what I mean. Actually, even what with about a DD, Chilling Touch? Even with a DD, he wouldn't have killed him. It's because Ake had the ability to chase and get like three extra Chilling Touch auto attacks off that he died, or four, however many it was. He will mourn his death. But yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that's really big though, because the Weaver starting with 400 extra gold. It means he can go for an early passy if he wants one. He can, he can just buy boots, boots, which I guess okay. is what he did. Actually, as, when, as tower diving go, early boots is actually, especially on Weaver, is very, very good. Because uh, your early levels of Tsukuchi is fairly yeah. short. And also even after the uh, yeah Tsukuchi runs out, having that Apophic shield up, you want to be able to chase yep. for the uh, kind of explosion. Try lane for EG defensively is actually pretty weak. Like, they don't have that. anything. You can see that Bane's getting feeble at level Dyer's 1 just to slow down the attack. CS, but Lil is just straight up harassing Mason. Yeah, I think this lane for EG, as soon as uh, like you see the Weaver AA, there's always the potential for an aggressive lane, but it's not a guarantee because at that point they hadn't really picked like both of their cores yet. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to anticipate. It's like, ah, do we do we go for this or do we go for like a greedier lineup? And I think in a way, like Alliance got a bit of an edge in terms of the laning phase. Also at the same time, because Bane has got Enfeeble level one, it makes their rotations or, or roaming if they want to gank mid lane much weaker. You really need the burst damage from Bane, especially once he has brain sample two and three. So I don't know exactly how EG is going to recover from this because this lane can't even farm. Well, the other thing too to keep in mind is that under normal circumstances, a tri lane, like an aggressive one like this, they don't always have the potential to dive. But if Zion PPD leave, Mason is dead. Like yeah. they will dive under the tower and they will kill him every single time. So this is not like other tri lanes where you can just play defensive and be like, hey, I'm cool. You know, I'll just sit by the tower. Yep. Not with this lane. Universe. So get a bit aggressive on that. Oh, Bulldog is four stacks up. And uh, should be able to pick this one up. It actually just gets the aggro off the tower there as well. And there's a fifth stack. And four Admiral Bulldog <laughs> will be dropping. <laughs> Took a little while, but Universe. That versus Doom. Is that something you'd normally see? I think Universe just played it very well. Um, the general rule of thumb is any melee hero, or, well, any hero for that matter, is you don't want to get above three stacks. So when you get three stacks, you just walk as far away as you can. And maybe Bulldog just counting too much on his tower yeah. uh, to keep him alive there. And that rider had excellent, you know, mic uh, aggro control under the tower, so it's like... Artizi's doing really well mid. He's uh, been bottle crying from very early on. He's, like, top on lattice, and he's going to get that DD as well. So S4 having to... Uh, he's going cross -west. Wow. Cross. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought cross -west could be the better choice. You want to disrupt the team fights, surely, more than you want to bring damage to this. I mean, the team lacks disables, right? That's the one thing we mentioned yeah. during the draft. I mean, yeah, but the you only extra disable... Rider, like, I, mean, surely... I guess if you land Tornado, it's good. Yeah. 
the same time, even though RTC is doing well in this lane, like he's not playing a hero that could, for example, roam bottom, get a double kill. And then, you know... And they kind of need someone bottom. Right, so I feel like RTC, despite doing well, as long as S4 doesn't leave the lane and could protect his T1 tower, he's fine. Bottle crowing uh, everywhere for EG. Universe is bottle crowing on the off lane as well. He just uh, sent the bottle back, so... He's looking to stay ahead on his lane. And if he can get um, a, a early blink as possible, maybe he's the person that's for EG is going to be able to make the rotations and mess up the tri lane. Well, speaking of rotation, there's a little bit of damage being dealt here to Zai. Nice torrent, though. Gonna hit on Loda. They go for the chilling touch. Nightmare is on. EGM can shield it off on Loda. They want to turn around. They want to go for Mason. Radiant's they might be able to die of this, but under attack. they do need to be careful. There is a full creep wave. That nice. damage output is insane. They're going to go back, but the shield's going to break, giving Zai a little bit more damage. Mason critically went boots first as his item. No greedy for saving up, uh, whether it's Helm of Iron Will or Midas. He needs as much survivability as he could get. Also, the magic stick is a big part of that as well. Dyer's yeah, middle well, tower is under I think under the, attack. the one extra strength that you get from a Quaswex Invoker is that he can TP to gank, whereas Exort normally wouldn't. Well, yeah, sounds right. Well, yeah, Egg, but Exert. I'm saying like the amount of control and extra kills and damage that you get from that is going to be quite a bit higher. Arteza Ooh, using the rest of his remaining mana. Yep to not uh, take more damage from that. He, I don't think he's, he's going to die S4 from this. S4 wants to make him use it. Question mark. He yeah. wants to make him use it. Flame blood. OP. Oh, he's being so <laughs> greedy. He actually gets away. He's going to go back and flame breath him? Yep. With the regen on that value. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I'll take that. got to be careful. He's going to have another fire that's breath another S4 knows that. Though. He's got quas regen. Um, uh, uh, S4? Oh. He's just like... Is he trying to outplay them? Like he's he's not gonna die because he's winning first loses. Um, oh, um, that's okay. it. That's the kill. But there's a TP in, so yeah, he's going to die. The shield. Yeah, there you go. EGM pick up the uh, picks up a nice camera. Well, that's but, worth for uh, Arteezy. Yeah, I don't know, man. EGM's gonna get level five because of that. It's only five minutes in. It's pretty good, man. Of course, Invoker dying is bad, but at least they didn't completely lose out. It's a steal, though, on S4. Yeah. Like, just just standing there, dude. It's like, yeah, whatever. I'm at me. I guess it's kind of good EGM getting quite a bit. He got quite a bit in the uh, bottom lane. He even got a little bit of farm where Loda was actually harassing as well. So he could actually be the big kind of mid-game hero. Mm -hmm. in terms of being able to turn the tide for uh, Alliance when the fights will go down. But I, I still got a feeling Universe is the, probably the most important player so far on EG's team when it will actually come to matter. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be huge Dyer's these lasses. And he's actually just taken attack. the uh, rune, haste rune. He's going to find uh, S4 in the river. And he's dead. Arteezy will find him as well. No stack. Oh, good on Faithful Stack. He uh, could have no coming in. Thing. Wait, did he have mana? It's 200 for Ghost Walk. And then what, 25 or is it? Yeah, but he had three one charges. I think he could have ghost walked. Yeah. He could have also EMP'd when he walked up to high ground or something. But yeah, another death for S4. It's kind of a big deal. S4 generally, if not winning the lane, at least comes out even. We remember that Brewmaster game where he had a tough time in lane and got like, a very quick blink dagger. Well, Invoker, not only is he goal dependent, he's very level dependent Dyer's as well. So I'm not sure if he's going to have any impact in this game. Aside from throwing out like two spells in a yeah. team fight. But it, it's not even like keeping S4 down. It's also like you give uh, Arteezy a good start. You give Universe a slightly better start. And, you know, if Arteezy can get tanky enough, even if you end up throwing a Doom on him, you know, DKs are happy to sit through a Doom and stay in the team fight just to stay in the team fight. Oh, he'll right click. It doesn't too. take him away, yeah. So it's, uh, it's nice for EG, despite the, uh, the tri lane not going so well. At least the other two lanes have gone pretty good for him. Yeah, both their solos are Dyer's actually insanely over level right now. Attack. They're going to chase on Zai, Loda. He's got a shield on, he's got that chilling touch. He's going to throw the scarabs. Oh, he's faking the torrent. And Loda, he's going to go for the kill. Shikuchi's farther in. There's nobody on the side of the map for Zai. Like, he's not having the greatest of times right now. There you go. Well, if you're easy to look at that, it's like, hey, man, we're just going to miss at least two waves of farm. Let's just see us. Yeah, but EGM, EGM gets it. It's <laughs> almost guess. worse. Yeah. <laughs> like, give it to the Abaddon. Almost level six. Dyer's middle oh, tower they want to die is under attack. Is under attack. I feel like Alliance is winning so hard on the offlane that it, it doesn't even matter that S4 is just having a tough time. I mean, it does. He, he wants well, to level Bulldogs died as well. He could be dying again. There's a... Two X Kunkka. Oh, they ping it out. They know he's there. Okay. I think it will matter. I think uh, Zai will still be pretty useful uh, when it comes to the 5v5 fight. 
then things might kick in more for EG. This quad works in Booker, man. Ooh, doesn't have the damage. Stand. RTZ wants to go in. Dragon Tail. TP reaction coming in from EGM. Should be fine. And then he realized, oh, they had no HP. Probably killed the Mind Breath. Oh, okay. He's a little bit aggressive, guys. He has no fear. No fear. No fear. I mean, if you know exactly but, how the case is going to work out. But Andy, nor to EG. Uh, That's true. That's true. That was like so two weeks ago. It's fine, dude. What? It was awesome. I wasn't here two weeks ago. Fair enough. So, oh, RTZ, Invis, Invis, pops the bottle, just have enough mana for the Breach Fire, and that's another death in this form, man. He's 0-3 right now. You know what this reminds me of? Like, Vigos, back in, like, three, four years ago, where he just, like, makes the mid guy he's playing against look like a scrub. Dyer's middle tower mm, sorry, is under well, attack. but RTZ is... To be honest, the first death was overconfidence. Like, Dyer's yeah. he was trying to fortified. make a gutsy play, and it backfired. And that some resulted into him dying two more times, basically. Yes. I mean, the invis was unlucky, but. Dyer's middle tower. We're gonna have has a, uh, a blink on universe now, so a nine minute blink. And that, when that comes into effect, we should see EG kind of align their efforts a little bit more. And he's gonna pick up a smoke on top of it, so we'll see where they're gonna wanna go. Mid tower goes down to Artizi. Well, load the TP's in, and he's actually quite low, so if they have ch enough chains then can get them dead, but looks like they're not focusing top. Would be a TP rotation by now if they want to kill top. Well, I will say this, like, even if Alliance have a bad time on S4 for a little while, and Bulldog has died once, eventually those heroes are going to get big, right? And then you have to worry about a Doom and a very farmed Weaver. You can Doom one of the cores. I mean, you probably, well, actually, Luna and DK don't really care about Doom, yeah. to be honest. And then you're gonna have boat buff on the Doom's target anyway, so there yeah, I'm not sure. Top lane should be a kill. Yep, here comes the lasso. We're gonna see RTZ reffing first. There's a stun. He the first. I think he stunned the, the creep. Yeah. And then Lotus Kuchishin got picked up. Yep. So time lapse. Dyer's top tower. Didn't matter. Under got the kill. Yeah. Under secure. Well, uh, yeah, that's something. And all this time, you have to consider uh, just because of the rotations and also Loader leaving the offensive tri lane. They've been able to get some decent farm on the Luna, and they're actually going to pull in Ake and will pick up a kill hot lane. TP rotations coming in. We all see S4 going to pull up a cold snap. Going to have to run away though as uh, Eclipse is used. He's going to drop and Loader, all by his lonesome, is like, ah, oh, just take a fight with the creeps. This feels a little bit more comfortable right yeah, now. Yeah, EG destroy the tier one tower up top. They're going to try to go for more. Tizi's going to have flame breath, and here comes what a flame breath pushing both people back. <laughs> Okay, the nice. burst. Does he have a haste ring? He does. Yeah, he's <laughs> running them down. He spike throws up. He's like, you know what? You're dying for this, even if you get denied. Oh, I can't. Oh, no, he can't Lots get to it. Range, he can't get to it. Okay, <laughs> run, run the other way. Got oh, him. one health. He had Holy. one HP. Oh. So two denies on that team fight. EGM denied himself, and then uh, Arteezy denied Universe. I don't know why my chair is just gone crazy. I think you got the broken one. I got the shame one. The fake chair. Still better uh, in favor of all the team fights uh, again in EG. And things are slipping away from Alliance. If, if you're all looking at what Alliance could or should do in terms of items or what they want to do, well, where would you want them to go with this game plan so far, Andy, Lumi? I mean, items for Alliance. Hides in the trees. Huh? The items for Alliance, you mean? Yeah, like and anything that you feel like is kind of crucial to get them back into the game. Is it levels? Is it items? Uh, it's levels more than anything. I mean, if you look at the level comparison right now, it's Arteezy is level 11 and S4 is level 7. It's not great. Like, if you're that out-leveled on an Invoker, the levels for him are more important than the item. Sure, it's nice to have like a Luxury Force Staff or Drums or an Agonyms or whatever your item of your choice, but without levels, the hero just doesn't function. It's not like a carry where you can just get gold and make up for his lack of levels in farm. It doesn't work that way for Invoker. For me, it's, uh, if you're in this situation, your items have to help you fight now. Um, I was surprised that Admiral Bulldog didn't pick up a mech because I saw him having 2,000 gold, but instead he's got a Blink Dagger, and I think that Blink Dagger was pinged out. So Admiral Bulldog's first surprise gank might not be that effective. Also, to that point, Lotus gone for drums first. Normally on a Weaver, you want to go for that Lincolns, and then the death, so you want the big right-click items. But he's really forced to fight, because EG, if you look at their lineup, sure, they have decent mid to late game, but they could also push now. 
with both online on their support. Dyer's Kunga, two points in Lunar's Plus. Attack. And you have a DK in the front line. You could just yep. get every tower uh, outside of the tier three. So I think Alliance need to have items that fight and they have to rotate. And here comes a push turn tier one bot. Yeah, FTZ is pretty tanky as well, just having that casual bracer on top of power treads. And also, Fiend's Grip is now online, uh, just level 6 for PPD Dyer's before this uh, tower, tower gets under siege. And it kind of feels like Alliance pretty hesitant to take this fight as Universe will scout out and look for a pick, won't find anything. Dyer's and they're just picking up the farm where else they can, which was mid with Admiral Bulldog top tower is and also top. It was Loader pushing out and they're going back away even before the uh, creeps hit the tower. So. EG definitely setting the pace of this game. Definitely be worried if I if I was a, a fan for Alliance, and it's going to be interesting to see how this uh, ghost ship, just a level seven conquer, will come into play in the next team fights. But you have to be pretty scared going up against a, a bat rider and a shadow blade DK right now. Surely, is, is it even worse? Go, even worth trying to go for like an early gem? to try and stop like some of the initiations. I think the gem carry here would just die. I think you kind of have to, you have to sentry basically. Like, Everywhere. Yeah. Okay, well, Arteezy looking to strike. Yeah, there's no sentry down either. The sentry is actually for EG, so yep. they know that there's no detection in this lane. They also know EG is here. I don't think they get a kill, they have a shield. Wow, that oh, reaction. Nice for it. Yeah, the shield comes on, that, that should be it. The EG has an observe war in front of that tier two, so they also see ammo Ammo coming in. But what can they do? Like, the thing is, Alliance don't have a team for initiation. That's that's why I thought, like, so surely that it was going to be an X or an Evoker. Because if you don't have initiation, Quaspex just doesn't really feel that good. Wow, they're going to X and send RTZ back to base. Talk about value. Oh, pro. He's even going to bottle Zai, so that, that X was free. Universe being doomed. Getting chased down by Loda in the woods. Loda actually time lapses. It's like, nope, I don't want to be part of this. X torn on Doom, but he's very, very tanky. Then Eclipse comes off as well as a grip. They get Doom dead immediately, so that Doom did not even fire off. Meanwhile, what a tornado grabs everybody, but do they have enough damage follow up? They don't. Nightmare rolls on RTZ. Nightmare's taken. The bullet's gonna hit. No, he will not, but it gives everybody at least movement speed. Meanwhile, the Ernie goes on S4. He's straight up dead. Loda, there's nowhere from the run. There's detection everywhere. One more right click's gonna do the job, and Mason. Well, he's gonna take down at least. Uh, the Bane with him. My mistake for calling the Doom, looks like he doomed somebody else before the fight even broke out. Yeah, he yeah. doomed uh, Universe, and Universe ran away. But, um... That was really bizarre. Like, that whole engagement was just really weird. It's like, Alliance feel like there's not gonna be probably many opportunities to get a team fight in their favor, but when you push the DK away and send him back with no mana, it feels like you kind of want to make something happen, and that's why they chase maybe a little bit too far, even with Doom used on Universe. Yeah. But uh, yeah, of course, uh, Arteezy came back and it was all in favor of VG at the end. But not not huge match. I think it was like uh, four to two in kills in that last engagement. Yeah, I really like the way that um, EG's been using their Kunkka as well. Like the support Kunkka is something that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And it used to be run pretty much as a roamer, like more than anything else. It's like you set him up with a guaranteed stun at level three and then you have somebody else there with him. Like, anybody really works because X range is actually fairly long in comparison to what most supports can do once the X is actually level 2. But just being able to go back to base like that, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but you're spending, what, like two minutes less walking around the map every time you do that? Yeah. Like, give or take? So, and then you don't have to waste a TP to get back Radiant's to a tower to continue tower farming. Is under attack. So just having that kind of map efficiency is huge. Almost reminds me of Ember Spirit. Like, yeah. sure, you have to jump to, you know, another hoop to do it, but... That effect is so powerful. He was even able to bottle Zaya up you know, on the way back, having a full bottle. Yeah. Good stuff. Gem on Universe now as well, so... Yeah, like, Alliance like feels like they need a, another good 10 minutes farming and getting some core Dyer's items, like even just finishing the Force Staff on S4, getting something decent on Doom, so he, when he actually blinks Radiant's in, he's got some sort of uh, power uh, to the team fight. But speaking of Doom, Admiral Bulldog and Ake are going to be smoked in the enemy jungle. Gonna eat up a creep, and nothing really gonna happen down here apart from picking up the tier one tower potentially. But they might be trading it for a tier two. There's universe with lasso available, looking to strike. Radiance on top. He will connect, and he will have 15 one charges. Radiance up. bottom tower. And that tier two tower goes down. So Dyer's alliance avoiding the fortified. fights the best they can, trying to get the items up, and loader heading towards his Lincolns as well. But Dyer's wow, EG just tower digging out the tier three tower. Yeah, again, put some pressure? Alliance have this lineup, at least hero-wise. They don't really do much much later on, so EG is uh, appropriately punishing them for that. 
I mean, they have a DK, one of the best tower pushers. And if it's, he's ever low or needs mana, XTP, man. What a tech. I don't know, I, I'm Radiant looking at it and I'm thinking, that tier attack. one bottom died. And they traded a tier two mid for it, and that was where Alliance put their aggressive tri -lane. That was supposedly winning really hard. We're gonna have to wait on that S4. He gets last of initiations there, and actually hits quite well on the EMP, but that doesn't really seem to matter here. The boat bump trying to keep the team alive for the time being. Boat is gonna hit there on Ake in the back. He manages to go down. Loda gets fiend script as well. That's two kills right now, going in favor of EG. They're continuing to chase out. EG continuing to go on EGM Dyer's right now. Ultimate going to be popped. Here comes the Eclipse. Mason wants to go back in. S4. I think this is a dieback. He dies again. Yeah, not great. Can they even kill anybody? No, they can't. Mason just runs out of there. Blink out the Nova. Just one of one more hit. Five people dead or six, right, with the dieback? So how fast do you think you can make Alliance GG? Because I went inside before 20 Dyer's minutes, but after that team fight, they don't have a he lot of health. He dieback, right? Like yeah. a booster bought out. Yeah, RTZ yeah. X back, and he's uh, now full HP. That's so good. Like, that is so good. Yeah. What a change. The thing is, outside of a coddle, like, no other Dyer's hero can do that. Top tower has fallen. Has fallen. GG. And there yeah. you go. Before 20 GG, minutes. 19 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, one of the big things in the last fight as well was uh, the Ice Blast from Ake. Unfortunately, ended up missing on yeah, the yeah. target they wanted to take down. I can't remember who it was that was doomed, but it was like, oh, that didn't hit. And then uh, I think it was actually the Luna. Uh, so missing the Luna. And then, uh, yeah. All right, build your team around a little bit of Arteezy. But S4 mid? Didn't do well.